Hey y'all, I'm Brianna and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be sharing a few tips that I've learned while using Zoom for virtual teaching. I've also used Zoom during my professional development because I'm a first year teacher and so I'm going to give you guys a few tips whether you're teaching virtually or you're learning virtually for how to use your iPad to help you through the process of being on Zoom. So if you guys want to see those tips and just keep watching. So my first tip is to use your iPad and make a second Zoom account. And so whenever you are on your laptop or your main device, you'll have your Zoom account pulled up. And then with the iPad, what I like to do is log on. So this allows me to be able to kind of use this like a second screen and be able to do things on my iPad and look at my iPad while I'm teaching on my laptop. So one of the things that I like to do from my iPad is I'm able to see all the kids' faces and so I'll switch to the grid view and be able to see them. I also am able to do things like check the chat from my iPad. So from my MacBook, whenever I'm presenting, which is pretty much every single day because I'm showing them a lesson, a slideshow, or whatever that may be, let me start sharing my screen. So for the purpose of this video, let's just say that I'm sharing the screen. So from my iPad, I like to always just check and see that I have the right screen pulled up and see the view that my students are seeing just to make sure that I'm sharing my screen and that they're able to see that. And so from my iPad, I can see the exact same thing that my kids are seeing. I'm also able to check my chat while I am presenting from my laptop. Sometimes I'll ask them questions and say, type your answer into the chat, or if I'm giving direct Directions, they might have a quick question and they don't want to interrupt me while I'm speaking so they'll just drop that into the chat bar and so while you are screen sharing on zoom you are able to look at your chat and stuff like that but it's kind of hard to focus whenever you're speaking presenting a screen and trying to do all of that from the same screen you also have to move things around if you're trying to click and then you have the main zoom panel there so there's a lot of movement going around and so I would rather not have the chat on my laptop and have it pulled up here. That way as I'm talking, I can easily see if anybody drops a question or an answer into the chat. There's also a lot going on while you're sharing. So I have a waiting room and I have to admit kids in. Sometimes they might be coming in a couple of minutes late. And so as I'm presenting and speaking, I'll have to pull up my wait room here and I'll be doing a lot. And so having the iPad kind of just lets me have a second screen to keep my chat over there and be able to see the kids. Because while you're screen sharing, unless you change your side view, you're not able to see everybody. And even if you have the side panel on, I think it only shows you maybe three or four other people besides yourself and again there's just a lot of clutter going on so that's the first way I use my iPad is to kind of use it to monitor the chat see the students while I'm speaking and also just make sure that I'm sharing the correct screen and so from Zoom, if you click share screen, you have a few different options. You can share your desktop if you have Google Chrome or something pulled up. There's also an option that says iPhone slash iPad via AirPlay. So you can also do this from your phone, but just for this video, I'm going to be showing you from the iPad. So if you click that and click share, then all you do is just connect your iPad to the same network, which mine already is. And then if you swipe down on your iPad's display panel, you're able to click screen mirror, and then you are sharing from your iPad. So let me click screen mirror. You just click zoom MacBook Pro, and then the display from my iPad is being shared over here with my students. And so this could be really useful if you are taking notes by hand and you want them to follow along. Also for math class, because learning virtually, it is probably more difficult for math because the kids really need to see things written out. And so I could be over here writing or doing whatever on my iPad and it would share out to all of my kids from Zoom. So that's a pretty useful thing. And again, you can also do this with your cell phone. So let's try with the phone. So I'm going to stop that one. So from the iPhone, it works the same way. And now I am screen sharing from my iPhone. You can also get apps from for your iPhone like this one, the one that I use to take notes on my iPad, it's called GoodNotes 5. You can also get that for your cell phone. So you can definitely screen share from your phone if you don't have an iPad and you want to show something or maybe you have a stylus for your phone, you can also take notes and screen share that way. 
So the last way that's really useful for your iPad when it comes to Zoom and virtual learning is to use your iPad as a second screen. This is really useful when you are on the student or the learner side. I had to do a ton of training um, through Zoom for my first year in new teacher training. And so what you can do is if you go onto your MacBook and you click on that little square symbol at the top, you can do AirPlay. So I just connect my iPad. And now my iPad is a second screen to my MacBook. So how is this useful? If you're watching a presentation or watching something on class and also trying to type notes at the same time, it can be kind of hard to balance out all of your screens. And so what I did while I was in the process of doing my Zoom trainings is I would have a tab. So I would have a tab, maybe something I'm looking at or notes that I'm typing, and I would drag that over to my iPad side. And then from my MacBook, I would still be able to see the presenter, their screen sharing, whatever they're doing over there. And then from over here, I'm able to use my iPad as a second screen so that I'm not having to minimize things and there's not a lot of clutter. And so as I'm typing notes, it would just go over here to my iPad. So that's super useful to use, um, especially if you're learning. You could also just use it as taking notes while you're watching the Zoom from your laptop or MacBook. So those are a few ways to use your iPad and MacBook to help you get through Zoom, whether you are virtual teaching or virtual learning. If you guys want to see more videos like this, let me know down in the comments. Thank you guys for watching. I will see you in the next video. Bye y'all.